Hi, I'm Debbie. I'm a condor keeper at the Los Angeles Zoo. And this is Dolly. She's a nine-year-old California condor. She is our condor ambassador. And what that means is that she is able to come and visit uh, people and visitors um, and share the story of a California condor. She's um, sits on this lovely perch and she allows people to get fairly close to her so that they're able to see a condor very close up and it's a really great way for us to tell the story of California condors. The California Condor Recovery Program's mission is to restore wild California condor populations in North America but we have learned a lot about California condors from us taking care of California condors in human care here at the Los Angeles Zoo. We have been breeding California condors for over 30 years here at the zoo, and we have learned a lot from doing that because prior to then, prior to the mid 1980s there were no California condors in zoos anywhere. So you might be asking why is Dolly here? Why is she not in a cage or why is she not flying away? People ask, why is she not flying away? Well the problem is is when she was a baby so she was raised in a nest in the wild at Pinnacles National Park which is in Central California. Around four months of age she broke her right wing. So this wing right here is the one that's broken, right here on this part of the bone. They don't fly until about five or six months of age. So she was not the age that where she could have flown yet, but somehow she broke her bone. The nest was being observed by biologists at Pinnacles National Park, and one day they're looking through the binoculars and oh, her wing looks funny, it's dragging, it's, something's wrong with it. So they went, they hiked to the nest and checked on her and in fact, somehow she had broken her wing. Um, it's kind of a dangerous time, about four months is when the babies start getting um, very active. They like to jump around their nest. They like to start flapping their little wings that don't really have a lot of feathers on them at that time, but they like to jump and start flapping around and they can accidentally hurt themselves. So we think, uh, we know some, something happened to her. They, they uh, went in the nest, found it, and they brought her down to the Los Angeles Zoo. The Los Angeles Zoo not only breeds California condors, but we also do a majority of the medical care of sick and injured California condors that live in California. There are three release sites in California and anytime there's a sick or injured condor, most of the time those birds come to the Los Angeles Zoo for treatment. So Dolly's no exception. She came here, she was four months of age and we decided at that point because she was still growing that she needed to wait for surgery for a little while and um, we waited and then at about a year of age we did the surgery and unfortunately the bone that she broke uh, it was broken in a really bad spot and it was very hard to repair that and it didn't really work the way that we wanted it to. Uh, bird bones are hollow and it also broke very high up on the shoulder and so it just didn't leave a lot of material to work with. And so this wing, this her right wing, she cannot extend it out all the way and which means she can't fly. So she is flightless, she cannot fly. So that's why she's not flying away off the perch. Um, because she can't fly, it makes, gives her a little disadvantage when she's around other California condors. So if we were to put her in a large cage with other condors that were flighted, she would be a little bit at a disadvantage because she can't 
behave normally, she can't defend herself normally or get away or fly around. She can also get in trouble if she were able to climb up on something. She wouldn't be able to get down very easily. She might injure herself. So she's not really able to live with other condors in large cages. And mm -hmm. what? You staring at something, huh? We had the opportunity to designate Dolly as the California Condor Program's first California Condor Ambassador. And we took advantage of that, and which meant that she was now going to forge relationships with the keepers that work up at the Condor area instead of other condors. We do learn a lot about condors through her because we've never had the chance to directly interact with a condor day to day to day like this. Um, all of the condors we have at the zoo, except for Dolly and except for the California condor that lives at the bird show, all of the rest of them are in our breeding program. So they are left alone, essentially, to be condors. We don't interfere in their life. We don't go in their cage every day and clean up and, and um, get up in their business every day. We leave them alone. They, they do what they do naturally and they like to, to just be condors. The breeding season from courtship, egg laying, the egg hatching and raising the chicks is essentially a 12 month process. So it takes up the entire year. And at the end of that year, it starts over. So the birds are busy all the time. Um, we've just never had a chance to interact with a bird uh, on such a long-term basis, but essentially nine years at this point, we've, we've been able to interact with her. And we've learned a lot about uh, condor behavior, um, some of the physical aspects we've learned. Um, it's been a really great um, experience for us. Because we've been able to interact with Dolly very closely, very intimately, we've been able to understand her postures and behavior. So California condors don't sing like a lot of other birds sing or talk or have a vocal uh, repertoire. They do make a few sounds, but they're more like grunts and hisses. And everything that they do to communicate to other California condors is all posture and visual body movements. And that's something that when the program first started, we didn't know much about because even in the past, the wildlife biologists that studied these birds in the wild were studying them from through binoculars and they were never this close to birds to really understand the shape of an eye or the, the tilt of a head or, or why a bird preens at a certain time, that that means something. They were just observing the bird in the wild and seeing where it went and there it was not the ability to dissect their behavior so closely. So when the breeding program started, they started trying to define behaviors so that we could quantify that. And that's actually been adapted because of Dolly, because of the fact that we can interact with her and we can understand her moods and the behaviors that she portrays during those different types of moods. Now we can connect that to our breeding pairs and we can also connect it to birds in the wild. They're all the same bird, they all act the same way. So that's been a really awesome benefit for us, us personally being able to in interact with Dolly. The, the biggest thing that Dolly's been able to contribute is just being able to be close to the public and for the public to be able to be close to her and to see that California condors are not ugly, they're not revolting, that their bald heads are not gross, they are, an essential part of the ecosystem. They are the cleanup crew. So if you don't know, vultures, which a condor is a vulture, it just has a special name that's called California condor, but they are vultures. They 
only eat dead animals. They do not kill animals and eat them. They only eat dead animals. And they are able to eat animals that are diseased, which would normally spread disease in a landscape. They are able to eat those and they don't get sick. So they are able to remove disease from the landscape and clean up dead stuff. And it's essential that they exist. Uh, right now, she is preening. So um, it's kind of the same as grooming fur. So if you have a dog or a cat, you know the dog or cat spends a lot of time licking their fur, grooming it. Um, birds and dogs and cats don't really have hands. So they can't use a comb to comb their hair. They only have their beak, and, and dogs and cats use their tongue to lick and groom their fur, and the birds use their beak to groom their feathers. So there's a whole process that they go through to groom their feathers. Um, their feathers need care every day. They can get, um, if, if you've ever seen a feather close up, you know that you can pull apart part of it. The little strands of it are kind of stuck together like Velcro. And sometimes they, they come apart if, especially if you think of a vulture, they have to go on a carcass. They kind of have to fight over it uh, with, with other vultures or other animals that eat that type of food. And they can kind of get dirty. They can get gross food residue on them. Their feathers can get a little messed up and they have to be able to clean that. So one of the things that condors are well known for is taking baths. They really, really love to take baths. But after you take a bath, you gotta comb yourself. And so that's what Dolly's doing. So she's doing uh, preening. She's, she's preening, she's going through her feathers and basically zipping the zipper parts back together. Once we put her up on the perch and she checks everything out, she just starts getting down to business. What, what can I do today? What, what, what's left on my to-do list? Oh, I have to preen. Okay, I'm gonna start preening. That's basically what goes through her head. People often ask, why do you have to take care of sick condors in the wild? And the reason is, is we want them to succeed. And at this point, all of the condors are still being monitored. They all have transmitters on their wings that show the biologists where they are. And if there's something wrong with a bird, we want to be able to fix it and get that bird out in the wild. Sometimes we've had cases where adult birds have broken body parts, toes. We've had a broken leg. We've had broken wings sometimes. We've had a few other injuries, but it's not very common. It doesn't really happen that often. We're talking over 30 years, not, not very often. Um, we do have much more cases of sick condors coming in from the wild, and the overwhelming majority of those are sick from lead poisoning. And lead poisoning is something that the birds get when they ingest pieces of lead and they get the lead from their food. Uh, like I said before, they're vultures that eat dead animals and sometimes those dead animals are dead because they've been shot with ammunition and most of the ammunition previous to this year or last year was lead ammunition and even a very, very small little fleck of lead ingested by a condor can paralyze and kill the bird. And condors are not the only birds or wildlife affected by lead poisoning. Bald eagles, golden eagles, loons, and many other water birds like ducks in the past have been victims of lead poisoning. Right now in California, it is not legal to use lead ammunition to hunt or um, shoot for depredation reasons. Uh, last July, Ju July 2019, 
was the beginning of a statewide lead ban. And if that is followed, by, if, that, if that is participated and followed by everyone involved, by all of the hunters and the ranchers, and anybody who goes out and shoots anything, then we won't have to worry about condors getting sick anymore. But unfortunately, that just hasn't been happening so far. I have been at the LA Zoo in the California Condor Program for 24 years. And I've seen a lot of changes. And watching an egg hatch in front of you is one of those things that is one of my most cherished memories of the program. But the most exciting thing that's happened in the last few years is our discovery that the LA Zoo pioneered that we can raise two chicks in one nest at a time. There, there are some limitations to that. They have to be very, very similar in age. They can't be far apart in age, but we've done it five times now and it was a 100% success every single time. And that is something that I was skeptical about in the beginning. I was worried that something could go wrong or that it would be stretching things too much, but we did it in a safe manner and it worked and now we've done it multiple times and it's very, very exciting for me to see how our team made that happen and how it can be applied to everyone breeding condors if they wish and how great that will help us if we need to produce more offspring. The other really exciting thing is that over the last 10 years in the wild, the wild condors in all of the release sites have been breeding and breeding routinely and essentially having no issues with breeding and raising their chicks, except for the lead poisoning part. But that's something that is the whole goal of the program is to have these birds reproduce in the wild and take care of themselves. And if we can just stop losing birds to lead poisoning, I, I really feel that we could phase out the recovery program very quickly. Within five to 10 years, I feel, if lead poisoning completely disappeared, we could see self-sustaining condor populations in the wild in five or 10 years, very easily. In 1982, there were only 22 California condors in existence. And they were all in California. And now we have over 500 birds and at least 300 of those are in the wild right now. The numbers ebb and flow every year. So in the spring, when all the eggs hatch, the numbers go up. And then unfortunately they go down the rest of the year because of birds that go missing or lead poisoning or something. And we don't have an exact number all the time, but we know it's a little over 500 right now with over half in the wild. I like to remind people that California condors are a native California species. It's something to be proud of that these birds live in California. It's a very special animal. And I think the biggest thing is just that they should care about the birds, that they succeed. I think Dolly and all the California condors I take care of are beautiful and have a very interesting personality 
They're all individual personalities. And I hope that everybody feels the same way about them after they get to know Dolly and after they get to know California condors, that they feel that they're beautiful and interesting and unique and worth caring about. Thank you for joining me and learning more about California condors and the California condor recovery program.